Welcome back to the Art Room, Mrs. Larrabee here. Today we're gonna to look at perspective, specifically one point perspective. We might see something in perspective if we're driving down the road and the road looks like it narrows as it gets further away from us. Um, as we go towards this horizon line where the sky and the land meet, maybe you see telephone poles or buildings going by and the ones that are closest to us look bigger, but the ones that are further away look smaller. That's what we're talking about when we mean perspective. It's a powerful thing to add to our visual art because it lets it look a little more 3D. It lets the viewer sense the depth of what we're trying to portray to them. Here's a, maybe a photographic example, uh, but let's look at some of this in classical artwork as well. This is from 1689, and this one shows a road, maybe a little different than the road we saw in the picture. Instead of telephone poles, we have these trees going down. Notice that they're getting smaller as they go further away towards the horizon line. You can also notice that there's a house on the right side that's closest to us. In the background, you can see a town, what looks to be a tall steeple, maybe to a church, in the in the foreground on the left side, or in the, I'm sorry, in the background on the left side. It's further away and appears smaller even though we know if they were sitting side by side, that tower would be much bigger than the house. This is all parts of perspective. All right, we're going to fast forward about 150 years. Here we go, 1820. Okay, not much has changed, right? We still have the road going down the middle, these trees going down, getting smaller. In the distance, we can see some buildings. We notice that there's um, a person standing on the right side here. He is so big. If you look at the horse and the person going down the middle, you can tell that they're smaller. They're further away than the person that's standing closest to us in the foreground. Okay, we're gonna jump ahead about 200 years now. This artist, Grant Hafner, is a contemporary artist who is producing artwork currently, and he does these amazing perspective drawings of kind of what we saw in the first um, photograph of roads, of things that you might be going by. He creates this idea of movement inside his artwork as well. We're going to look at a few pieces of his artwork, but first let's look at how we're going to draw in perspective. All right, here, I know it's a, maybe a little hard to see because everything's a little dark, but here is a perspective drawing. What you're gonna need today for your art lesson is a piece of paper, a pencil, a ruler, and uh, well, an eraser, a good eraser. All right, when we talk about perspective, we're gonna start with our horizon line. That's where the sky and the land are going to um, meet. If you would like to have a lot of sky in your picture, you're gonna to wanna to put your horizon down low. If you would like to have a lot of road or land in your picture, you want your horizon up high. I'm gonna put mine somewhere kind of here in the middle, a little below center. I'm gonna be drawing rather darkly just so it shows up on camera for you. You will probably want to use light lines because we are gonna be erasing some. All right, right in the center of this horizon line, I want you to put a vanishing point. That's that dot right there in the center. This vanishing point is the spot where everything is gonna disappear here too. This is the furthest spot on the horizon. So we're going to use this point um, as a reference for everything else that we draw in our artwork. All right, so first we're going to draw a diagonal line from the vanishing point and then just switch your ruler over to the other side, another diagonal line, both of these lines meeting at the vanishing point. All right, let's put a dotted line running down the center of this road. We're gonna start by drawing a small uh, triangle down the center of our road. So not as wide as our road, but down the center. Draw this kind of lightly because you're gonna be erasing this in just a moment. All right, let's add some horizontal lines on here. All right, we're gonna go back and we're gonna erase every other segment. Okay, so watch for just a minute. See how I'm erasing every other segment and we're starting to get these rectangular blocks like the dotted line in the center of the road. All right, so we've drawn it in perspective. It gets smaller as it goes away. They get further apart or closer together as they go away. Let's try a telephone pole now. All right, our telephone pole is going to also reach up into the sky. So this is gonna go above the horizon line and below the horizon line. So we're gonna be making another triangle wedge, this time one above the horizon line, every time we go to that vanishing point and below the horizon line. This is gonna help us get the angle of these telephone poles correctly. All right, draw your first telephone pole closest to you. It'll be the furthest on the side of your paper. 
You're going to skip a good bit of skip space and draw your second one. As you continue to draw your telephone poles, they're going to look as if they're getting closer together. We know in real life they're not, but in perspective, it looks like they get smaller and closer together as they get down the horizon line. All right, we can erase these guidelines that we added. We don't need those there. Hopefully you drew a little more lightly than I did. Mine are not gonna erase super well. And we can see it now. It looks like we have telephone poles standing beside our road. You might wanna add a few details to them. Maybe you wanna add that, that top support line um, at the top of the telephone pole. You could go back and add some wires to them. Remember, if you're adding any of these things, the further away they get, the smaller they appear, the closer they get, the larger. So if you're adding this T to the top, they're gonna start to get larger as they get closer to us. Um, the wire, I don't know, it, we won't really have to make it look that much thicker. It just works for us. You could just let that go right off the top of your page as well. One last little detail we might wanna add is something to the sky. Maybe you wanna add some clouds up to the sky. We're gonna come back though, and next week we're gonna talk about how to add paint to it. We'll look at the style of Mr. Hafner again and see what we might can glean from what he does with his amazing artwork. But for right now, wonderful job on your one-point perspective.